الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters Tonight, Wednesday, uh, Thursday night, Islamically Christian It's a Wednesday night According to their calendar, a Gregorian calendar According to the Islamic calendar, <coughs> this is Thursday night. And every Thursday night we have al-fiqh. And this is a very important topic because al-fiqh is the understanding of the religion. How you pray, how you fast, and all these matters, very important to know. And uh, in order to understand these matters, you need scholars, senior scholars. Like the like of Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Sheikh Islam, Imam ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah rahimahullah, the four Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, Ahmed rahimahullah, Imam al-Awza'i and other scholars from the Salaf, and also the scholars, our current scholars, the senior scholars like al-Allama, al-Imam Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah bin Baz rahimahullah, may Allah mercy upon him. الشيخ العلامة الفقيه محمد بن صالح العتيمير رحمه الله الشيخ العلامة الوالد our elder and senior scholar الشيخ صالح بن فوزان الفوزان حفظه الله and this is his book which is entitled summary of Islamic jurisprudence and we are studying the fifth pillar of Islam which is Hajj and um, we have uh, covered, alhamdulillah, a great deal in this chapter. And uh, this is very important that we know how to perform hajj, how to perform umrah. The Sheikh, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, a pilgrim reaches this first partial release of ihram after fulfilling two of the following three rituals. So when he said partial or the first release, you can say partial or you can say first release. What does he mean by first release of ihram? Meaning that when you enter that state of ihram, there are things you cannot do it's you are it's pro prohibited for you to do it for example you cannot pu put perfume you cannot pu put perfume once you assume ihram طيب you cannot put perfume on you cannot drink anything that has a flavor in it like saffron anything in the coffee or tea you cannot put your regular clothes, like your tobe and the like. You cannot cover your head. You cannot cover your head with anything. Like your kufi or something like that. You cannot do that. Tayyip. So, after doing these three rituals of hajj. These are called manasik al-hajj. Manasik al-hajj. The rituals of hajj. Because al-hajj is like steps it's like steps these are the rites of hajj so they have to be in order they have to be in order so every day has its rites of hajj so now this is on the day of eid on the day of eid if you do these three things then you have done half of your hajj you have done half of your hajj if you wish you can say you are Half released. You are half released. Half released from your ihram. From your ihram. He said the first one, throwing the pebbles at Jamarat al-Aqaba. It's very specific. Jamarat al-Aqaba. On the day of Eid, which is the 10th of the Hijjah. The 10th of the Hijjah. So what do you do? You throw the pebbles. How many of them? Seven. Seven pebbles. So with each one, you say Allahu Akbar. Consecutive. 
الله أكبر 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 seven times and where جمرات العقبة جمرات العقبة because the monuments are three you have the biggest one and this is the one جمرات العقبة then you have the middle then you have the small one okay on the day of Eid you specifically is you specifically go to جمرات العقبة so you do جمرات العقبة specifically جمرات العقبة this is the first thing you do then having the hair shaved or shortened shaved is better shaved is better because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made dua for those who shaved three times and he made dua for those who shortened one time so shaving is better shaving is better shave your hair number three, performing ifada performing ifada طيب performing ifada if you do this and also the sacrificial animal the sacrificial animal so now if you throw the pebbles at jamarat al-aqaba you shave your hair and you do the sacrificial animal then you have released okay are you with me you're half released from from your ihram if you go to mecca and you do the tawaf tawaf al-ifada which is a pillar in hajj and you go to safa wal marwa and you do safa wal marwa and you finish then you are all the way released from your ihram you're all the way can you have marital relations yes you can now you can but before that you cannot when you do the three the throwing the pebbles at jamarat al-aqaba and then you shaved your hair and then you did the sacrificial animal up to here everything else that was haram for you to do you can do it except marital relations you cannot have marital relation meaning that you can put perfume on you can wear your tobe you can you can put on your kufi you can do all those things right but if you want to have marital relations you have to do tawaf al ifada tawaf al ifada which is a pillar of hajj so you go you go to mecca you go to masjid al haram and you perform tawaf and the sa'i between safa and marwa Once you do that, you can have relations. You are all the way released. You are all the way released from your ihram. The Sheikh said, however, the second complete release of ihram is achieved after performing all the aformed three rituals. When a pilgrim fulfills them, everything that was unlawful, Due to ihram, because love for him, even sexual intercourse. This is after you do tawaf al-ifada, the tawaf and sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Then at that time, marital relationship becomes halal. After throwing the pebbles at Jamarat al-Aqaba, slaughtering the sacrificial animal, and shaving or shortening the hair, a pilgrim then proceeds to Mecca to perform ifada, going forth tawaf. After that, a pilgrim performs sa'i if he is performing hajj as tamattu'. Tamattu', we, we, we mentioned hajj tamattu' is the most common, is when you come to Mecca, for example, on the first of the hijjah, you are in Mecca. Right? Then you perform the umrah, you perform umrah. Then you become released from your ihram after you perform umrah. Then you can wear your normal clothing, your tawb and the like, right? So on the 8th of the hijjah, you assume ihram for hajj. This is called what? Tamattu'. This is called tamattu'. Al-Qiran, Al-Qiran is when you join umrah and hajj together without, without dissolving of your ihram. I'll give you an example. Someone comes to Mecca on the third or the fourth or the fifth of the Hijjah. 
Then he performed Umrah, but he did not release himself from his ihram. He kept it because he's going to join it with Hajj. So he, do, he does both of them together. He does not separate between. There is no pause in between. You understand? There is no interval in between. Unlike Tamattu'ah. So that's where they differ. Tamattu'ah, there is an interval in between. There is a pause. Two days, three days, four days, one week. Like, But Al-Qiran, you join them together. That's why called Aqd Al-Qiran. Aqd Al-Qiran means when you, when you tie the knot. When you tie that, you get married. Aqd al-Niqa. It's called Aqd al-Qiran. Al-Qiran. Tayyip. The Sheikh, he said, or as Qiran, or Ifrad. Ifrad is when you do Hajj only. You don't do anything else with it. Ifrad. But he has not performed, he is performing, no, naam, uh, has not performed it following the arrival tawaf. Yet, if a pilgrim is performing Hajj as Qiran or Ifrad and has already performed Sa'i following the arrival Tawaf, then he doesn't have to perform another Sa'i after Ifada. So if a person already did it when he first came, he doesn't have to repeat it again. He doesn't have to repeat it again. Those four rituals are to be performed in the following order, if possible. Stoning Jamarat al-Aqaba first. Slaughtering the sacrificial animal. Shaving or shortening the hair. And performing al-Ifada tawaf followed by Sa'i. Sa'i is between, between Safa and Marwa. Between Safa and Marwa. Performing these rituals in, the, in this order is an act of the Sunnah. Is an act of the Sunnah. So there is no sin on a, on a pilgrim. If he has to perform them in a way other than the aforementioned, aforesaid order. This is because on the farewell pil- uh, hajj, the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet ﷺ only pilgrimage. Whenever a pilgrim violated that order of rituals and told him, he ﷺ replied, do it and there is no harm. It's, it's okay, it's no problem. It's, alhamdulillah, it's valid if you did it out of order. It's okay. However, doing it according to the sunnah is better. But if you did it out of order, there is no problem. However, sticking to this order is better. For the Prophet wasallam performed them in that way. As for tawaf, circumambulating the Kaaba, a pilgrim has to start it from the black stone. So that's where you start from the black stone. You end at the black stone. You start from it and you end at it. Standing aligned with it. Aligned with it. So you stand and you go this way. You go around. Until you get to the black stone, that's one. And then you go again. Until you finish seven. Until you finish seven. The Sheikh, he said, and kissing it if possible. If possible, kissing it is possible. But now with the virus and everything, the scholars, they issue fatawa, religious verdict, that we have to take precautions and we should not kiss the black stone. Because there is a possibility that somebody may have the corona and then if you kiss it, you may get contaminated. You may get contaminated. Of course, everything happens by the qadr of Allah, but we have to take the precautions. Tayyip. Or touching it with his right hand. If this is unavailable due to the huge throne of pilgrims, because there are so many people there, it's very hard to do these things. It is sufficient for a pilgrim <coughs> just to wave to the black stone instead. Wave. Just to wave to it. Without pushing others or thronging to reach it. And a lot of people, they don't have no adab, they, have, they don't have no etiquette. And they, they are defeating the purpose of, the, of the, uh, this act of worship. You see them pushing others because they're stronger. But this is not the way the Prophet ﷺ did it, the Sahaba did it. This is not ibadah. The ibadah is not violent. It shouldn't be emotionally violent, you know. This is not ibadah. This is ignorance. 
Some people do it like that because they want to get to the black stone. But on the expenses of harming other Muslims. And harming other Muslims is haram. Now how can you do that which is sunnah to harm Muslims? This is not correct. This is very bad behavior. So the Sheikh said it is sufficient for a pilgrim just to wave to the black stone instead without pushing others or thronging to reach it. From the black stone as a starting point, a pilgrim begins the first round of tawaf counterclockwise, this way, keeping the Kaaba on his left. So you're going to stand like this. The Kaaba is on your left. and You go this way. So you don't go this way. I've seen some people going this way. I was like, wow, why are you going this way? No, you're supposed to go this way. All right. Tayyip. The Sheikh, he said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Naam. Keeping the Kaaba on, on his left and occupying himself with supplications. He can dua, make al adkar. You can even recite the Quran. There is no blame. You can even recite the Quran. The remembrance of Allah and the recitation of the Quran upon reaching the Yemeni corner. The Yemeni corner. A pilgrim should touch it if possible, but not kiss it. And the recite when between the Yemeni corner and the black stone. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirah hasana wa qina adab al-nar. That's between the Yemeni corner and the black stone. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةَ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Our Lord give us in this world that which is good and in the hereafter that which is good and protect us from the punishment of the fire. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 201. By reaching, by reaching the black stone again, a pilgrim will have completed one full round of tawaf. Then a pilgrim approaches and kisses, kisses the black stone or at least waves to it and starts the second round. And so on until he finishes seven round. There are 13 prerequisites, means conditions, for the validity of tawaf. In order for the tawaf to be valid, these, these are the prerequisites. The first one, being a Muslim, because if a non-Muslim makes tawaf, his tawaf will not be valid. Because he doesn't have the foundation. He doesn't have the foundation, tawheed. He doesn't have tawheed. He doesn't have iman with him. Be insane. Otherwise, if the person was insane and he makes tawaf, his tawaf will be invalid. Because al-aql, sanity is one of the condition, is one of the conditions. Like the Salat, same thing. Salat, you have to be sane. Every Ibadah, fasting, you have to be sane. The only Ibadah that even the insane has, has to do is Zakat. Zakat, the ulama, they mention, because Zakat is the right of your fellow Muslims. So the poor and needy, they have a right upon you. So if the insane person has wealth, then his guardian has to give zakat on his behalf. Yes, he has to give zakat on his behalf. But the insane person, it is not required upon him to pray and fast and the like. Having the intention of performing tawaf. Having the intention of performing tawaf. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Actions are based on their intention. And for each person, what he intended. So if someone performed the tawaf, for example, someone lost his son, and he started making tawaf, right, looking for him. And he did seven around, and then he found him. He said, well, I did seven. I might as well keep this. We say, no, it doesn't count. Because your intention was not to worship Allah. Your intention was to look for your son. You understand? Like someone who uh, performed the wudu to cool off. He did not perform the wudu as an act of ibadah, as an act of worship. It's a personal benefit. 
because he wants to benefit, you know, his body. He wants to cool off. So this wudu will not be valid for the salat. Likewise, if he was to make ghusl with the intention to cool off or to clean himself up, not to lift that state of uh, major Im Im impurity, then this ghusl will not be valid. Will not be valid. Tayyib. Concealing one's awra, meaning awra, mughallada, the private part has to be, they have to be covered because if they are uncovered, the tawaf will not be valid. And the al-mushrikeen, they used to make tawaf naked. They used to make tawaf naked. Number five, being in a state of ritual and physical purity. Mean both, both. Not only minor, but also major. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you cannot be sexually defiled. So if you had relations with your wife, you can't just go and make tawaf. You have to make ghusl. You have to make ghusl to go and make tawaf. You have to be, or you had a, you had a wet dream. You had a wet dream, so you have to make ghusl. You have to make ghusl. This is major, uh, major impurity. And you have minor. You, you, you use the restroom, right? You pass gas. You ate camel meat, for example, right? Or you lost consciousness and you woke up. Or you went to sleep and you woke up. Then you have to make wudu. You have to make wudu because a tawaf requires purification. So in other words, we have a woman, for example, she made the tawaf seven times, and then after that, she had to go to the restroom, and she found out that her cycle just started. Okay, this is a great benefit for the sisters, great benefit. So if she finds out that her cycle just started, then her tawaf is valid. Her tawaf is valid. Okay, now she can go and make sa'i between Safa and Marwa. She doesn't need to be in a state of wudu. Because sa'i does not require that. But tawaf does. Tawaf does. The Sheikh said, completing seven rounds of circumambulation. Meaning, in other words, if someone did five or six, then it will not be accepted. It will not be valid. It has to be seven. Why? Because al-ibadat tawqifiyya. Al-ibadat tawqifiyya. Ma ma'ana hada al-kalam? What does this mean? Tawqifiyya means that al-ibadat, they are connected to the text. They are connected to the text. So they are based on textual uh, evidence. On textual evidence. So whatever is in the kitab and the sunnah, we cannot go beyond it. If Allah said seven, we have to do seven. If we do less than that, this is an innovation. If we do more than that, that's an innovation. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man amila amalan, laysa alayhi amruna fahuwarad. Whoever does an action that is not in compliance with this affair of ours, will have it rejected. Allah will not accept it from him. The Shaykh said, number seven, circumambulating counterclockwise, keeping the Kaaba on one's left. In other words, if he did it the other way and the Kaaba, he, he put the Kaaba on his right and he, he goes, like I've seen some people doing it. Subhanallah. Probably those people were ignorant. They were going the wrong way. So, if someone went the wrong way, this is not going to be valid. This is not going to be valid. Naam? Tayyib. The Shaykh he said, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, number eight, circumambulating the whole Kaaba, avoiding passing through Al Hijr, Ismail, Ismail's precinct, or ascending it and walking on its crest. So you have to go, you have to do the whole Kaaba, no shortcut. You have to do the whole Kaaba. Nine, circumambulating on foot if possible. If possible, because, you know, you cannot ride there. You, the, now they have the upper level for the people who are handicapped and the like. And it takes longer because of the uh, space 
because you have to create space for the people who are on uh, wheelchairs and stuff like that. But the one downstairs, everyone goes on their feet. Everyone walks. Number 10, observing succession while performing the seventh round of tawaf. Unless there is a call for prayer. So if there is, what does that mean? You cannot uh, say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do t three or, uh, and I'm going to go eat some food and then come back and do again. No, it doesn't work like that. You have, you have to do it in succession. Unless there is call for prayer. Like for example, you reach the fifth round. Salat al-Maghrib was called out. You go join the, the, the jama'ah. You don't keep uh, making the tawaf. You go join the jama'ah. Ah. Or funeral prayer to perform. Because these salawat, they have a reason. They have, they have a sabab. They have a reason. طيب? In such cases, a pilgrim is to interrupt his tawaf and offer the prayer. Then he resumes tawaf from where he has stopped. He does not start all over again. No. Yeah, this is very important. طيب. And completes the remaining rounds. Number 11. Circumambulating within the borders of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Al-Masjid Al-Haram. 12. Beginning each round of tawaf at the black stone. In other words, if he starts from uh, Rukn al-Yamani, for example... It will not be. It will not count. It has to start. He has to start from the black stone. طيب. Thirteen. And in the round at the black stone as well. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant us all the علم النافع والعلم الصالح. الحمد لله رب العالمين. صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.